All right, so, so we, we are recording now, and uh, I want to welcome everybody to the call. We've got 57 on, so pretty good. Um, I want to introduce somebody to you. Um, you know, many of you know our upline founding coach, Robert Hudgens, who is on our call tonight as our guest speaker, but uh, many of you probably don't know Robert. Um, he is a founding coach of Team Beachbody, which means that he was at the initial meeting with Carl where they introduced uh, the whole concept of the Team Beachbody network. Uh, you know, Robert was one of the first people to sign up. Um, so he's, you know, nearly at the top of our tree. He's in the Millionaire Club. He's been an elite coach. He's been a uh, coach advisory he's been on the coach advisory board a cab member he's a 15 star diamond um I mean, he's been a cast member of p90x2 if you guys have done that and uh he's he's my mentor so um and i know he's uh, talked to a lot of people on this team and he's made some real positive changes in our team and uh, i just wanted to have him on tonight to uh, talk to you guys because I know he has a, a great message to share with you guys. So take it away, Robert. Thanks, Greg. I really do appreciate it, guys. And super excited to be uh, with you all here tonight, you know, and it's great to see 61. And I mean, and the numbers keep going up at, as we talk. I'm sure we'll have even more of that, but 61 people on this call because I can remember it wasn't that long ago, Greg, that we had, what, 8 to 12 mm -hmm. on, on, on these things. And it's amazing to see how just being consistent and sticking with something and following through with something, the success that can be had. I mean, we're at 63, and they're going to continue to keep coming in. And one of the things that, that I just – I see for your group and I see for all of you guys is one of these days you're going to be getting in and on one of these, and, and there's going to be 630 people on, and then 6,300 people on. And then all of you guys that are on this call or on, on this Zoom – right now are going to be able to say, you remember back when we were, there was only 63 people in here? Yeah, I was on that one. Now look at this. And you guys will be the founders, the founders of something amazing, the founders of, of a group that just blows up. And, and you know what? The great thing about that too is, is you'll be able to reap the rewards of being uh, part of the 63, now 64, uh, <laughs> you know, at this time. But, but you know what? I, just to kind of give you a brief introduction, because I know there are so many more people that are on this one that ha I have not had a chance to, to get to meet or to get to uh, uh, speak in front of or whatever, you know, just give you a little background on me. Uh, just like, just like uh, Greg said, I, you know, I, I was one of the founders, you know, and, and uh, of Team Beach Body, and and really, basically, what that means is I was a glutton for punishment in the beginning. You know, I I basically they couldn't beat me away from this thing. I started out as a customer, probably just like many of you. I I, I ordered P90X when it first came out back in 2005, and um, I ordered it by accident actually, and and I actually did it, and I had great results with it. And I mean, it wasn't easy. I mean, I had everything against me, uh, you know, including my wife saying, you know, that's not going to work. And I'm mad that you bought it anyway, because we were broke and I had no business buying something that was $380. Yeah, it was that expensive back then, by the way. And um, I had, had no business. I mean, you think about it at the time, that was $380. And I was a paramedic making $13.86 an hour. Think of how many hours I had to work just to afford P90X at that time. And so anyway, but, but the thing about it is um, what I learned from that program is, is much more than the weight that I lost or the, the inches that I lost in my waist or the body fat percentage or the six pack abs or whatever. It was much more than that because what I learned from that one program was that if I committed to something, followed a plan, and followed through that I could achieve some crazy, amazing things. And so because of that, I, I learned that, you know what, I can set goals and actually achieve them. You know, that I can, I can actually work hard for something and something cool will happen. 
you know, because I didn't have a whole lot of that growing up. You know, I had a dad that flaked out on us at an early age and, and basically bankrupted, not basically, he bankrupted our family. Um, I didn't have a dad there that was going to sit there and tell me that, you know, how to be a man, how to be a husband, how to be a father, how to be a businessman, how to be a successful person, because he was never any of those things. Okay. I didn't have that influence in my life. So it took something like P90X that actually kicked my butt into shape and taught me a few things. And along the way, I had the success from that. But one thing that I've always loved to do is I've always loved to coach. I always loved to try to mentor people. You know, when I was in the fire service and when I was a paramedic, I became a preceptor. And what the preceptor did means that you basically took on more shifts on the ambulance because you were, uh, I was training the rookies. I was grading the rookies. I was making sure they were doing what they were doing. But I loved having that mentorship ability to be able to do that. And so um, it, 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 the message boards that we had at the time with P90X I was able to hop on those message boards and just basically share the love, share my experience, answer questions, stuff like that. And that's what caught Carl's eye. Um, and so lo and behold, um, you know, whenever the coaching opportunity came about, I had actually saw him at a, at a camp for Tony Horton in Chicago. You know, Tony used to do these little fitness camps all around the country about once a quarter. And I, again, maxed out another credit card to go to that fitness camp. Melissa actually gave me the blessing because she wanted, she wanted me to see that Tony was just some regular dude, not some demigod that I should worship and just see that, you know, hey, he's one regular dude and you need to just get over it, just meet him already, you know, that type of stuff. And anyway, I, I got to meet him. I met one of my best friends in the world, Mark Briggs, at that, at that event. And we, you know, quickly realized that we were brothers from different mothers, but we, you know, became fast friends and became really, really close. Uh, that's where I met Tony for the first time. And we've been great friends ever since, but I also met Carl. He just happened to drop in on a whim. He and Isabella, they were just dating at the time. I think he was still trying to impress her by taking her to random places. And, um, I got a chance to go up to him and I said, Hey, listen, man, I, I, I love what this has done for me, what this program is and what Beachbody's all about. I'd love to be able to work for Beachbody somehow, some way. I'll, I'll clean out your trash cans. I don't care. I would just love to work for you guys sometime if I don't have to move to California. And, and, and you know, he says, you know what? I've, been, I've had my eye, eye on you. I, I'm going to – I got something up my sleeve. I'm going to give you a call in a couple of months. And, of course, I'm walking on cloud nine to get back home and tell Melissa, yeah, I talked to Carl. He said he's got something up his sleeve that I can work with Beachbody, make some, hopefully make some money from everything I'm doing. And he said he's going to call me in a couple months. She goes, he's not going to freaking call you. Now, I'm painting my wife out to be like the wicked negative, negative witch of the West, and she is not. She is just an amazing person, a fantastic coach, um, just a great motivator. But she, we were unhappy at that time, all right? So anyway, lo and behold, he actually called me and uh, we went to the uh, founders meeting and 41 of us started this little thing that now has morphed into almost half a million coaches. So what does that mean? Why am I sitting here almost nine years later on a, on a phone call with now 73 people? I got to start all over because 11 of you missed this whole story. Damn. Oh, watch the recording. Anyway, so I... Uh, I, I'm telling you, why am I sitting here almost nine years later? I don't know, am I too stupid to give up? Um, am I persistent? Do I, you know, what is it? You know, honestly, the, the, the biggest thing that I, th that I learned with this is if I commit to something, if I follow a plan and I follow through, some crazy things are going to happen. Now, those three things have guided me through every part of this business, every workout program that I've ever done, every venture that I've ever had. I coach my sixth grade, he's soon to be sixth grade, son, I'm a head coach of his team. And why are we successful on that team? Because we stay consistent, we follow a plan, we commit to it, and we follow through. That's it. So that's what we're, you know, every, every part, of, part of my life. Why am I still here after nine years? because I'm not finished following the plan. I'm not finished following through. I'm, gonna, I'm being consistent with it. So what does that have to do and why am I bringing all that up and why are we talking about that here? Because I know that I face this all the time with people that I work with. I'm sure that you face this all the time with people that you work with. And heck, maybe some of this, you've had some of these feelings as well. 
So I want to talk to you guys about persistence, okay? And people, you probably go, oh, really? I've got to hear this again. Yeah, you got to hear this again, okay? Um, here's what I'm talking about, guys. Okay, listen. How many of you started, and you can go with me, how many of you started a workout program? Okay, let's just come up with T25, okay? That's one or 21 day fix, but 21 day fix is like 21 days. I mean, I can stand my freaking head for 21 days. But let's just say T25. And if alpha, beta, you're going for 60 days. If you're really getting, you're feeling froggy, you go for the gamma and add another 30 days to it. But let's just say with this, you start T25 and you start going and you watch that first video and you say, is this, by the way, any kids in the room? You say, oh shit, how hard, I, this is going to kill me. I can't do this. Okay. All right. How, how many of you look, said that and you quit? And you said, uh-uh, I'm not doing it. Or any of your workouts that you did. You tried the first workout, you put it back in, you said, no, uh-uh, I'm done, I'm not going to do it. I don't see any hands. Of course, I only see one of four pages. But, oh, you did up in the top right-hand corner. I see Bobby up here in the top right-hand corner. Brian, I say Bobby because of Bobby from Brady Bunch. I can scroll over your name. Armando and, and Brian. Hey, you know, I mean, that. hey, I, but did you, did you, you, you say, I'm not going to do this? Did you, throw it, did you throw it to the side or did you actually start and follow through? Because here's the What's that? Body, so I'm sorry, body beast, and and I did it. I did maybe a week, threw it to the side, said I, I'm I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do this, and I went on to something else. A year later, I was ready to do it. And I did body beast, and did the whole thing. And that's the thing. And Angela's saying she cried during insanity. Think about this. Think about uh, this workout program, okay? And so. Think about where you're at right now, Brian, and, and, and Armando, and, and Angela, and, uh, and Alicia. She cried too. Think about this. If when you started and you got, let's just say, one day, two days, three days, maybe a week into this, and you're like going, Dad gum, I'm so sore. My eyelashes even hurt. Or I'm, you know, this sucks. I just, I'm, 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 I haven't drunk drop 20 pounds in this first week with it. And you know what? This is so hard. I give up. How many of you have done that, wanted to do that, but you said, no, I'm not going to. I'm going to finish this first 30 days and see how I am after 30 days. Maybe you had a good coach sitting there going, hey, you can do it. Maybe you had a coach kicking you in the ass because you needed it. Or maybe, you know, maybe there's just something inside of you that said, I'm not done yet. There's, I can do something better. I can do something more. Okay? So you kept going. And you got through 30 days. You got through the alpha phase. And then you put in beta phase, and you went, shit. Or it's second month in, in insanity. My God, the warm-up's worse than the freaking workout from the first 30 days. I mean, and so you're like going... These freaking mummy kicks and jump knee tucks and all this other crap that he's having to make me do them out. I'm like tapping 174 heart rate in the warm-up. I quit. No, because you got time and effort invested from the previous 30 days. You probably have customers that are like this too, that you're like going, don't quit. You're only, you're, you're so close and so many great things happen in that next 30 days. You'll be amazed at the changes you'll see in your body. So you keep inspiring them. So you get into that second. You make it through the warm-ups. And you're making it through the second 30 days of insanity. Or you make it through the beta phase. And then when you're done, you're done with insanity. You're like, all right, I'm done. I'm not going to exercise another day in my life. I'm done. I'll quit. Or T25, you, you, you finish your last workout. Look, you said, yeah, I'm done. I quit. I'm not doing alpha. It's too free. I mean, gamma, it's too freaking hard. And you quit. No. Or I wouldn't be talking to you on this, on, on this call right now. But guys, I, I use that 
analogy, metaphor, whatever it is, I use that because you know what? That's exactly what our business and being a coach is like. Guys, I don't know how long you've been a coach. One day, one week, one month, one year, five years, six years, eight years, whatever. But there is a time when you have started, when you became a coach and you were so fired up, just like when you saw the infomercial or somebody sent you an email and you saw Body Beast and Sergi and he was going to beast you and all this other stuff or, or Sean and he's you're going to light your world on fire. So you, you called up and listened to the 17 minute infomercial person on the other line trying to sell you everything or whatever and you geeked about it and then a week into it or two weeks into it, you're like, ah, oh, man, I'm not quite as excited about it anymore. But you did it anyway. That's what being a coach is all about. You just got through whether you saw an opportunity meeting or you talked to your coach who sponsored you and you were so excited about what the opportunity was with this. You're going to get to help a ton of people and everybody's going to come flocking to you and flock into your door and start ringing your doorbell going, I want to buy this. I want to buy this. I want to buy this. Because that's what's going to happen. And when it didn't happen, this is too hard. I want to quit. No, you didn't do that because you're here. And if you're one day into this, one week into this, you're going to hit one of those points where you're going to go, this is hard. I want to quit. But that's where you've got to remember the reason why you are still here. The reason why you said yes in the first place. Okay? And then you remain consistent and you remain persistent and you you, like I said, show up, follow the plan, follow through. And when you do that in your workouts, in this business, in life in general, crazy good things can happen. So I want to read you a couple of things here. One of my favorite books I've been quoting a lot lately, and I've actually just read about every book that this author has put out. And if you haven't had the opportunity to go out, I want you to find a book called The Traveler's Gift. It's by Andy Andrews, okay? I highly recommend, um, I mean, I like reading the book, but get the audio. And the reason being is because Andy Andrews is a master storyteller. And um, he writes every one of his books, save for maybe one or two, in a story format. So you're actually learning the lessons within the story. story. Kind of like Go For No, that, that, that uh, book, Go For No. And uh, he does the voices in it. And it's so, it's just, you get lost in it. But you're like going, oh, I got to write that down. Oh, I, I, I got to write that down. So called The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. But he talks about the seven decisions. Uh, he talks about the seven decisions to determine personal success. And one of the ones that brings all, I'm not going to go through all seven decisions. You know, I've talked about, you know, uh, seeking wisdom and I choose to be happy and uh, the buck stops here. And I mean, you name it, there's all different ones and I'll let you guys read it. But the one decision that brings all of those decisions together is the persistent decision. Okay. And I want to read you, uh, I, I want to read you this persistent decision. And as I, as I read it to you guys, I want you to kind of think and maybe highlight some notes that go through it. But I want this to, as you go through this, and this may be one of those things that I honestly have to say, go back through this recording and listen to this again and write down as much of this as you can, okay? When you do that and you, you, you take this decision and you memorize it and you, and you make it your mantra and you follow through with it, You'll be amazed at what you can do and what, what opens up and what happens and how enlightened you'll be and how much more uh, uh, of a, of a uh, you know, commitment that you will have to whatever endeavor that you take on. And then I'm going to wrap all this up and how, this, how you can utilize this decision, how you can utilize doing this, what type of things that you can expect to happen, okay? But let me just go ahead and read this. And so as I, as I look down, forgive me if I'm not looking at the, uh, at the camera here. But again, 
This is called the persistence, the, the, the persistent decision. In, and I'm just going to set the table here. In the Traveler's Gift, the Archangel Gabriel presents David Ponder with the seventh decision that determines personal success. The seventh decision is, I will persist without exception. Write that down. I will persist without exception. Knowing that I've already made changes in my life that will last forever, today I insert the final piece of the puzzle. This is where he's kind of wrapping all the six previous decisions for personal success and kind of wrapping it all up. And this is the glue that holds everything together, this decision. I possess the greatest power ever bestowed upon mankind, the power of choice. Today, I choose to persist without exception. No longer will I live in a dimension of distraction, my focus blown hither and yon like a leaf on a blustery day. I know the outcome I desire. I hold fast to my dreams. I stay the course. I will, I will, I do not quit. I stay the course. I do not quit. I will persist without exception. I will continue despite exhaustion. How many of you continued your workouts despite your exhaustion? You were tired. You were sore. It was 4.15 in the morning by God, but you still had to push play. You continued despite exhaustion. I acknowledge the fact that most people quit when exhaustion sets in. I am not most people. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to tell you one of the coolest quotes that was ever said was somebody was talking to Muhammad Ali, and they asked how many sit-ups he, he does. And and because he's sitting there doing sit-ups, sitting there doing sit-ups, sitting there doing sit-ups. They've been doing it for a while. He goes, how many sit-ups do you do? How many, you know, how many have you done so, uh, so far? He goes, I don't know. I don't count until I get tired. Okay? He didn't quit when exhaustion sets in. The work begins when you're tired. That's what I tell my sixth graders all the time when I'm running their butt off in practice. The work doesn't begin until you're tired. That's when you learn. I am not most people. I am stronger than most people. Average people accept exhaustion as a matter of course. I do not. Average people compare themselves with other people. That's why they are average. I compare myself to my potential. I am not average. I see exhaustion as a precursor to victory. Write that down. Exhaustion is a precursor to victory. How long must a child try to walk before he actually does so? Do I not have more strength than a child? More understanding? More desire? How long must I work to succeed before I actually do so? A child will never ask the question, for the answer does not matter. By persisting without exception, my outcome, my success is assured. I will persist without exception. I focus on results. Write that down. I focus on results. To achieve the results I desire, it is not even necessary that I enjoy the process. Right? Sometimes this sucks. Sometimes it sucks having your friends laugh at you, run the other way, tell you you're stupid. It sucks when you get a return. It sucks when the back office doesn't work. Sometimes it's not necessary that I enjoy the process. It is only important that I continue the process with my eyes on the outcome. An athlete does not enjoy the pain of training. Can I get an amen and hallelujah from the congregation? An athlete does not enjoy the pain of training. An athlete enjoys the results of having trained. I love that. I love that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go stencil that on the wall of my gym. Mark my words. That's what I'm doing. A young falcon is pushed from the nest, afraid and tumbling from the cliff. The pain of learning to fly cannot be an enjoyable experience, but the anguish of learning to fly is quickly forgotten as the falcon soars to the heavens. 
A sailor who fearfully watches stormy seas lash his vessel will always steer an unproductive course. But a wise and experienced captain keeps his eyes firmly fixed upon the lighthouse. He knows that by guiding his ship directly to a specific point, the time spent in discomfort is lessened. And by keeping his eye on the light, there never exists one second of discouragement. My light, my harbor, my future is within sight. I will persist without exception. I am a person of great faith. Write that down. I am a person of great faith. In Jeremiah, my creator declares, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. That's in Jeremiah 29, 11, if you want to look that up and commit that to memory. From this day forward, I will claim a faith in the certainty of my future. Too much of my life has been spent doubting my beliefs and believing my doubts. No more. No more. I have faith in my future. I do not look left. I do not look right. I look forward. I can only persist. For me, faith will always be a sounder guide than reason because reason can only go so far. Faith has no limits. I will expect miracles in my life because faith produces them every day. I will believe in the future that I do not see. Write that down. I will believe in the future I do not see. That is faith. And the reward of this faith is to see the future that I have believed. I will continue despite exhaustion. I focus on results. I'm a person of great faith. I will persist without exception. Why is that so important? Why do you need to persist without exception? Why do you sometimes need to be the most stubborn person in the room? Because that stubborn person in the room believes what they represent. The stubborn person in the room believes that they're going to make it through and that what they're doing is right. Guys, what you're doing is right. You have the opportunity to create something crazy special. And I'm not talking about money. You know, money's, money's cool. I mean, I'm sitting here and you may be going, well, Robert, you don't know my circumstances. Robert, you don't know the amount of bills I got sit, you know, sitting in the corner. No, I don't. I don't know your circumstances. I don't see the bills stacked in the corner. I vividly remember my bills stacked in the corner. I vividly remember getting those shutoff notices. I vividly remember having to look my father-in-law in the eye and ask for a loan because I couldn't follow through on the promise that I made him that I was going to take care of his baby girl. I remember those times. And I remembered what it was like to not know what was around the corner. But I also know and remember what it was like when I finally had that aha moment that, you know what, I've got something in my grasp that can deliver me from the misery that I've been going through. And if I commit to it, follow a plan and follow through, crazy special things can happen. I know that for you guys too. Well, I live in a small town. There's only like 200 people in my town. There's no way that I can be a successful beach body coach. That's not true. Darn near everything we do is on computer, right? Well, you know, Robert, you, you know, I, I just, I'm not able to do the workouts. I've had three knee replacements because you had three knees and you know, I've got, you know, I, I've just had all these injuries and, and you know what, nobody's going to, uh, I can't do all the workouts all the time. That's okay. Just try, try to do something. 
because you will feel better and you will be believe you'll be a believer and you will commit to this because you believe in it. Know that you're surrounded by amazing people. You have 73 other people on this line that believe in you and that you have something in common with, that you guys can do something very special. Okay? But you've got to commit to this. And when the going gets tough, you got to know, come hell or high water, the only way that this thing ends is when I die. And you make that commitment. And I don't care how pissed off you get at Greg. I don't care how pissed off you get at Coach Relations. I don't care how pissed off you get that somebody said no. You keep going. You persist without exceptions. And know that nothing is going to stand in your way until you realize the, the, the path and you realize the future and the goal that you're striving to get. Because if you do that, crazy good things will happen. I'll tell you in less than nine years, if I could sit here on the phone right now, and I can't do this, I wish I could. But if I could sit here on the phone right now and, and tell you, you know, you start today. And if you will give me eight years and eight and a half months of your life, and you commit, you show up, and you go to your events, you get on your calls, you follow the plan, because there's a plan in place for you to be successful, and you follow through, you stay the course, that you can get a 1099 in January for over $1.2 million. Would you, would you say, I can do that? I bet any one of you would. By the way, that 1099 was only from a business center. So we got other things going on too. But I'm, I, the reason why I give you that is because it's attainable. If a knucklehead like me, who didn't know anything about this business, but just knew that he was too stupid to quit, can be successful and do that, there's no reason why you can't. And think about the power that you're going to have in somebody else's life. When you sit in front of them and you go through this same thing that I'm talking to you about and you go, what, well, you know what? I wanted to quit, but I didn't. And here's why I am today because of it. So, I mean, guys, don't let anything get in your way. Commit to this. And, and, you know, even if you spark up and you get to diamond, and you're like, woohoo, I made it to Diamond. Don't quit. Don't quit, because that's not the end result. Woohoo, I made it to 15 star Diamond. Don't quit. It's not the end result. Your time, when you've made the biggest difference, you know when your time will be up. You know what? I always say I get another day because I haven't realized you know, God's plan for me. That's why He allowed me to live today. I truly believe that we all are on, on this earth to carry out God's plan. And when we're done carrying out his plan, he'll take us. But until then, we keep forging ahead. We commit, we follow the plan, we follow through, and we do what we can to, to achieve that. I think that's what we have here, guys. We have the opportunity to save a lot of people. And that's our mission here. So before we leave, I want to, want to read you one little passage from this, from this book. And it's, it's awesome. When you think about it, it ties what I just talked about all together. It says, great leaders, great achievers are rarely realistic by other people's standards. Somehow, these successful people, often considered strange, pick their way through life ignoring and not hearing negative expectations and emotions. Consequently, they accomplish one great thing after another. Never, never heard, excuse me, never having heard what cannot be done. 
That is precisely why one should never tell a young person that something cannot be done. God may have been waiting centuries for someone ignorant enough of the impossible to do that very thing. That's from the Archangel Gabriel from Traveler's Gift. Sitting on a call on a Wednesday night. Uh, oh, is it Wednesday? It is Wednesday, is it? Okay. On a Wednesday night at 9.38 Eastern Time, 8.38 Central, 6 Pacific, whatever. 6.30 Pacific. It's not normal. With, 74, with 73 other people listening to some Yahoo from Texas with an accent talk to you. That's not normal. That's not realistic by standards, by today's standards. Successful leaders are not realistic. You're not normal. Be abnormal. Do something great, guys. Commit to this thing. No matter how many failures, but even more importantly, how many successes you have, never quit. Commit to it. Follow the plan and follow through. And I promise. I promise that if you do that, crazy special things are going to happen to each and every one of you. And I cannot wait until I get to experience that. Because it is a special when you get, when I, when you see people succeed, it is a gift. And it's one of the best things that we can ever experience. And I, know and I pray blessing over every one of you and I thank you guys for allowing me to come here and take up 40 minutes of your time tonight and uh again Greg great job brother so proud of who you are and what you stand for and how you lead and the commitment you have to this great group of people here um such an amazing team I uh, and uh you know what I I look forward to to, to seeing all of you guys at, uh, at the top of the list. I, I look forward to seeing all you guys and hearing your stories and, and how you've had success in this. And, and guys, just thank, thank you so, so much for allowing me to be part of your lives. And uh, God bless you all. And, man, have a great night. And uh, don't give up. Persist without exception. Awesome. Uh, th thanks uh, very much, uh, Robert. That was, that was a great speech. You're always an amazing speaker. You're so inspiring. Uh, I know that, you know, I want to, to learn how to do that, which, which, which you can now do. So, but you, you told me that you didn't start off that way. So that, that gives me encouragement. So, and, and I remember, um, you know, we, we probably everybody on this call thinks, well, you know, it's easy for you to be successful, to be a millionaire in this business because you're a founding coach. But I remember something you said on one of our other calls that your sponsor coach is an emerald who makes at most $250 a week. Well, my, my actual sponsor, um, is Rich Bell, and he, he's a little bit more. Uh, let me back up. My actual sponsor is Rich Bell. He's he's one of the founding coaches. He actually is the one who set up our comp plan. He he and Carl got together, and he was the consultant for Carl. I make about six times what he makes, mm -hmm. and um, which is pretty cool. Um, even though he does get a pretty healthy matching bonus from me, but um, but but the the, the thing about it is um, the guy right above me and if you want to look at a christmas tree and you're like a christmas tree and i'm this ornament down here and he's right here that's david dykler that's carl dykler's brother okay he's not my sponsor he's just my direct upline coach hmm. he doesn't do squat and carl's his brother okay he might be a diamond doubtful um so uh, i mean it, it it doesn't here's the thing i started out just like you guys I actually started out and the opportunity was a lot worse. I mean, opportunity sucked when we stopped. We had, we had uh, Activate and the club and recovery drink. And the club back then, sure as heck, didn't have Beachbody on demand. It didn't have anything. It was a joke. I mean, you, you couldn't even log into it. It was like one page. And it was like, woohoo, I get like a re one recipe. 
you know, Shakeology bars. No, not Shakeology bars. I'm sorry. We didn't have those back then. We didn't have Shakeology for goodness sakes. We didn't have, and P90X, people didn't know how to spell P90X when we first started. I mean, uh, it, it was always PX90 or that, or something, whatever. Uh, you know, and, and, and so there wasn't any of that. We didn't have challenge packs. Uh, and like I said, we didn't have Shakeology. We didn't have uh, any of that stuff. And, and Activate gave us like a $2 commission, and people took it for like three weeks and returned it half the time because uh, they get the same thing at GNC. It's a better product than what it used to be now. Um, but you know, so we didn't have that. And we didn't have the tools that are all in your back office or this cool app, Greg, that you need to check your email because I know you're part of the test group. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we, we didn't have that stuff. Okay. And you know what? We started this December 26, 2006. You know, I didn't get paid till mid-April 2007. We didn't have a website. We couldn't sell any products. I went around telling my friend, hey, sign up with me because we're going to be successful. Oh, what do I get when I sign up? Not a damn thing, you know, and, and but the knucklehead still did it anyway. But, you know, um, you know, Stephanie Richardson, I know I talk about her all the time. Melissa's actually in Colorado Springs right now. She's, she's with her tonight. And um, Stephanie is a dear, close, close friend of ours. And she actually got into this business. Uh, you know, we talked to her about it. She's like, heck no. We talked about it again. No way. No, forget it. You know, hey, but you, you get, to, you get to, to, to work with your friend. No, I'm not in it. I'm not into that type of that, – that's just stupid get rich quick stuff. You know, no way. You're, you guys are stupid. And, uh, and then finally we were, she was talking to us one day and we're like, yeah, we got such and such customers and this, that. And she goes, hang on, you got what? You know, yeah, company gave us customers. You know, we had to be an Emerald coach with her. All right, hang on. Tell me a little bit more about this. And she became a coach. And then Julie Fulte is her personal sponsored coach. And she signed up Julie basically to get her to Emerald. And she was like, yeah, I'll give you my, my social security number, but you better ne never damn well ask me to sell something. I'm never going to sell anything, you know? And uh, anyway, Julie, she's a, uh, she's a 15 star diamond. She's on the coach advisory board. She makes probably $650,000 a year. Uh, Stephanie signed up. Didn't want to do it in the first place. Stuck with it, followed the plan, committed to it, follow through. She'll clear a million dollars this year. Um, I can go down the road. I can talk to, talk to you about people after that, you know, time and time again. People that wanted to quit. Stephanie wanted to quit on me. She had this, these things. She goes, Robert, you really need to do this. You need to see if you can get the team to do this. And I go, why don't you step up, take a leadership role, and you do it. You know, you, know, you, you start taking the bull by the horns. I was trying to kick her falcon butt out of the nest and make her fly. She's like, I'm done. I quit. You can't. You no, know, this is too much pressure. I'm not into this. She almost quit. She didn't. Thank you. But, I mean, that's, that's just one of those things that she persists without exception. And she didn't want to at first, but she has a vision, she has a goal. I'm gonna say goals. She has a destination and a purpose that she is striving to get to. And so she's gonna, she's gonna persist without exhaustion. She's gonna have great faith in it. And she is going to follow through with it. And, and, and like I said, I can go down the line. I know Greg's been in many of those situations where he wanted to toss in the towel, but look, you know, he's, he's doing fantastic with this business and changing lives, man. I mean, and, and so that's, that's the way it is with you guys. And I started out like y'all as a customer and I just had the belief and I just didn't quit and I stayed here. Now, does that mean even though I didn't quit, does that mean I just got to sit up here in a fat cat seat and just go, oh, I've checked my commissions on Thursday, even though I didn't do a damn thing, you know? No, I worked. I talked to people. You know, I, I, I put myself out there. I wore my heart on my sleeve. I believed in people. And, and, and that's how this happened. So, I mean, you've got an amazing plan. You've got an amazing team. You've got an amazing leader. Just do that. Just follow through and commit and say, come heck or high water, unless I die, Ain't no way Beachbody's getting rid of me. And then go for it. And uh, you know what? I think you'll be where I'm at at the time. 
I really do believe. I think the opportunity is that great for somebody willing to grasp it. Just look at Lindsay Matway, look at Melly Mitro, look at all these amazing leaders, uh, Vito Lafada, all of them that are just crushing it in half the time. So no, there's no reason. I know them personally. And there's no reason why you can't do the same thing, you know, so, so go for it and, uh, and, and go get it. So anyway, don't ask me another question. I'll go on another 20 minute dissertation. By God. <laughs> well, will you take any questions from the team? Sure. We'll take a couple. Let's try to get off, uh, within the next five minutes. I've got a, I've got a, an I've got a I've got I'll probably need to start, uh, making sure okay. he's good. Sure. So uh, two questions. Does, does anybody have a question? You can unmute yourself. I just have a quick one. Um, you mentioned the traveler's gift, but other than that, what would you recommend as a good read or something that really opened your eyes with the business and motivating yourself? Great, great question. Um, I love, uh, uh, again, I'll, the, the traveler's gift is awesome. And the traveler's gift is going to transcend um, – Team Beach Body or anything you do in the business world. It's just great for your life in general. I also love Go For No um, is a great book by uh, Richard Fenton, F-E-N-T-O-N. Um, I love that book. And here's the reason why it's because there are so many times in our business that, uh, you know, that, that, you know, let's just say success club, for example, how many of you guys have hit success club five, like in the first week and then coasted for the rest of the month because you hit your success club five. I mean, I'm guilty. I've done it. I mean, um, or, or how many of you had a goal to lose 15 pounds in a workout program? Uh, you know, one of the workout programs, you did it maybe in the first 30 days, and then you kind of, did you decide to coast after that and not do the, the, the rest of the workout program? I mean, that's, go for no is awesome because one of the things does that, that it teaches you to do is to not only go for, uh, it's such a methodology of thinking of, of, I, I want to see how many yeses I can get instead of that. You're actually going out and trying to get so many no's and, uh, and, and that's what you set your quota on and you don't stop until you get so many no's and you'll find that when you do that, you actually start getting a lot more yeses. And so you have to even talk to more people, but, um, how it talks about, uh, like, like I said about success club, how you, you, you achieve a certain goal or something and then you coast this gets you to kind of change that way of thinking of, of, of stopping and then coasting and continuing on and finding that when you do that, I mean, the growth that you have in your business and what you experience after reaching that first goal is, is mind blowing and what you can do. So I like go for no a lot. Um, I mean, you're always going to hear anything by John Maxwell is, 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 is fantastic. Um, but I think those two are, are awesome um, for, for, for getting kicked off and getting started and, uh, go for no also is a story form as well. Uh, like, like the traveler's gift. And I really learned a lot in those. I mean, uh, I'm reading a couple other books that right now that are more along the lines of, of self-help and not, not in the story form. And I mean, it's just, it, it tends to be a little harder for me to get through because I stop and I want to take notes and I want to do all this and it takes me forever to get through them. Whereas if it's a story, I can absorb it. It's like watching a movie to me. And, uh, and I just learn a lot and I just, I, I just get really, really passionate. And, and guys, here's something I want you to do too when you're reading these books. And I do this when I'm reading books or listening to audio. I also do this when I go to church and I listen to the message. I take notes because everything that I that, that I learn, I'm always thinking of ways that I could turn around and use that material to teach and to share with other people. And you'll be amazed because, you know, knowledge with action is dead, but so is knowledge that is not shared. When you share knowledge, it's amazing. It's like a seed that is, it, it, that, that is multiplied. It's like that apple tree that you, one seed makes an apple tree that then makes a bunch more seeds because of all the apples that fall to the ground. That's what your knowledge, when you do that, you take that in, you're that, that, that knowledge that you gain is that apple, is that initial apple seed, and you're able to go sp spread that, that, that spreads out and you bear fruit, and that fruit then contains more seeds. And you go out there and you spread those seeds and give those seeds to other people, and you'll be amazed at, you, you'll have a stinking knowledge orchard before you know it, so. 
Okay, I think you used up your five minutes there, so we'll, we'll let you go. All right, sounds good. <laughs> hey guys, I really do appreciate it. Appreciate everything you guys do. Thanks for sticking around. Um, guys, be active on your team pages. Don't, you know, don't let any of your person, you know, any of your people quit. Y'all hold each other accountable. Make a pact that you will be here a year from now, come heck or high water. Um, and you know, just, just stay active, stay visible. And, and I just, I just pray for, for, uh, for success for all of you guys. So, so thanks so much for, for having me here, Greg, and, and, uh, y'all have a, uh, have a fantastic night and, uh, persist without exception. All right. All right. Thank you. Take care guys. We'll see y'all. Thank Bye. you. Bye.